Yeah. I was gonna say who had the most influence out of like Lord Dirt or Chief Keith. Yeah. Cause influence, you talking about like um influence on the culture, influence on a rap game, influence on everything. Dirt Dirt influenced stars, bro. He gave Dirt he gave us King Von. Like he gave you Von. I feel like Chief Keith gave us drill music though. He did, but people was doing drill music. He was just the best at it. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's popping? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill, is in the building. J Hill Podcast. Uh, We're going to start counting soon. We're going to start counting soon. Um, Shout out to the gang in the building, first and foremost, man. Shout out to T, shout out to Seven. Yo, I ain't even going to lie. Say your name one more time. Warren. Warren. I want to give a special shout out to my guy, Warren, man. This nigga pulled up. We don't know each other from Adam and Eve. Warren. Adam. Adam and Eve, man, this nigga just pulled up. We was talking about business. We didn't get a chance to finish. The nigga said, bro, I'm going I'm to stay and help. What's, what's your business, bro? 4 4 Creators. Shout out to that. This nigga is doing some great shit, bro, when I want a content shot. Shout out to T for booking a guest today. Um, shout out to my guest, Boca 600. Squad. Special shout out to him and his team. This man was waiting for at least 30. Yeah, at least 30. Yeah. <laughs> And he was chilling. He, he shout out to him and his team. Shout out to T for booking a guest today. T always T she put me on with everybody. Yeah. So I just want to let y'all know this publicly. It ain't it ain't her. Don't don't blame her name. I, it was my fuck up. hundred percent. I'm a man enough to take that. But Buka Six Hundred is in the building. What's good, dog? What you on, buddy? Hey man, this is a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to have you. For sure. You looking good every day. You looking good. <laughs> You got a lot of emotion. Appreciate that, my boy. You know that. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so, damn. Where do we start? I feel like OTF, affil- I don't, affiliate, uh, that's the fam. It's how the family. I, yeah, how do I yeah, say it correctly? Yeah. Correct that's the family, that's my the, brothers. That's that's the family. So, you yeah. got a, a situation with Dirk, or is that, just, how does that? That's my big brother. Damn. So, are you signed so, yeah. officially, or? I'm 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 OTF. So I'm 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 the family. Okay. I'm like I'm like, you know, this shit get bigger than music because it's a bloodline. It's, it's really like you know, it's a real family. So I'm always OTF. So it's it's, yeah. it's never like a sign thing. You can't really be signed. You know, by by that being my brother, I just get the opportunity to you know do what I do, create what I want to create, like be myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not forced into paperwork and all that shit. So. You know, you know how it is when your big brother, yeah. you know, the boss man, goddamn it. Well, I mean, you, you, you me walk on your own like too, it. for real. I know how I, I'm, I think I know how it is, but I don't because yeah. that's a big deal. Like that's not just some yeah. little boy shit. So yeah, nah, I really I can't relate. You you on another level than me, my nigga. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so I'm just curious to how how does that work? Because I'm assuming that is it just all love? Like it's all just love? Like you do whatever. whatever. I mean, like I said, we we brothers, so shit. That's like you having a a baby brother, Mm -hmm. you having a little brother and shit. If you got the business, you know, you take care of the business, you the owner of the business, god damn it, you not like, it's, it's, you not really forcing your baby brother to, I want to say employee, but you weren't really, you know, your, your baby brother do what he want to do. Like, you know, your brother, how did that, like, bro, because we hear so many stories, and this is my first time even like, interviewing somebody that's so close that we hear some of these stories coming out of Chicago yeah and the shit get crazy I'm from Baltimore so I can I can relate to that part yeah it's kind of similar, <laughs> sure. similar for sure I, I done been to Baltimore it's, yeah it's, it, get, it's, it get crazy so yeah. how, how did how did this whole thing even come about like as far as what like what OTF, whole thing? just like even like we hear stories right like dirt like of course yeah. I guess let me start it like this when I hear Chicago and the music right yeah all I know is going back to like, you know, Chief Keith put the city on. That's what I would think. Of course, yeah. uh, 
Ye is from Chicago. So many others are from Chicago, but sure. that was really the the start of like that that drill music and that that gritty gangster shit. I know y'all had people yeah. before, but I'm not really yeah. too sure. I'm just curious from your perspective, how did it, so, how did it come about? So me, like, I'm a I'm a difference maker for real. Mm. Like I really come from like houses and sharing t-shirts and clothes and goddamn it running with the chief keeps and the you know the dirts like we all brothers so we grew up like i was around for everything for real mm. so so it's like it's different from me my perspective uh, all that should be way different from a fan outlook or like you know and that's why I'm i really like, like what, how was it for you in the trenches like it was crazy it, it got fun so you know like at first it was like slow motion. Like it wasn't no hype, you know, in the hood, it's just the regular fun. Mm -hmm. But like when that shit came around, that shit was like, you got people coming from all over, hanging in the hood. Like you even got like, not a, not don't know, like specifically put like a difference between whites and black, but you got like white girls and white, little white boys got them and coming to the hood and shit, coming to kick it and shit. So it's like, it was just more, more people. It was more like it was. It became a, a tourist attraction. Exactly. Like, I was. That's yeah. exactly what I was about to say. It sounds like yeah. you know, somebody put a place on a map, and it's almost so intriguing that it's like I want to go there to experience it. When it's like, nah, that's not really one of them type of things you want to yeah. just come and yeah. experience. It's not no fucking amusement park. Like mm -hmm. this is real life. It's so, definitely yeah. Definitely when I asked how was it, like how was it in the streets though? Like before you even got the fame, before shit. Before the, the the streets had a name attached to it for people to want to come in and I mean, be attracted to. Uh, Chicago crazy, so that shit like um, the people that's that's going through shit and the people that's in that's in that shit right now, like you can't blame them because it's like a product of environment type shit. Mm -hmm. So it's not like oh he went and made a gang or he went and started this or started that. That shit was already going on. So growing up. 13, 14, you're going to have a gun, mm -hmm. regardless of who put it in your hand, how it get in your hand, like, you're going to have a gun. Because that's the life. That's the way people, that's the way that shit go there. Mm. You got grown men shooting at little kids. You got little kids shooting at grown men. So that shit, like, like it's an environment thing. It's, it's crazy. Damn. That's, that's not even going to work, bro. That's a video, uh, Lynn, so appreciate you. We can use the phone today. Um, the... It's crazy that you say that because I have all these conversations on my podcast often, yeah. like, you know, coming from the city of Baltimore. It's like I asked on BPZ this and I was like, yo, do you think we was ever given a fair chance coming from the trenches? It's like, like you said, you, you got to have a gun, yeah. right? It's like they put yeah. us in situations to fuck our lives up. And then when we yeah. fuck our lives up, they judge us more. Yeah, they blame you. They blame you for some shit you was really born in. Mm. Like you go down and go to jail and all that shit for some shit you was really born in. This was not even your choice. Like they say, everybody got a choice. No, everybody don't have a choice all the time. Like, you know, it's crazy because that's the part I can relate to, right? Just being in the hood in the trenches, like for real. Like mm -hmm. outside of all these cameras, I can relate to that. Can't relate to prison so much, but it sounds similar to prison, right? And I don't ever want to compare it because, like, people were as it's niggas in there that don't have that freedom. You feel me? You outside, you yeah. got some freedom, but I say that to say. You know, it's like you go to prison and you gotta protect yourself. Yeah. But you protect yourself and now you sitting for longer. But all mm -hmm. you was doing is protecting yourself. It's like you wasn't, you really ain't give a, get a fair shake for real. But they drop us off in the hood. We we born in the hood and it's a nigga that's gonna try us just because we share the same space as them. Yeah. Now we do something to, to throw away our, our lives and it's, that's just crazy. Like, yeah. that's fucked up. It's like they, they make it meant. See, I did prison time. I mean, I, I done been in jail. I done mm. spent like two and a half years in jail time through my whole life. Mm. So like, you just say you on the deck and a fight break out. It's gonna be niggas who fighting you that you don't even know, but that's just how it go. Like everybody on go, everybody wanna hit somebody. Every So now you gonna do whole time for some choice that you ain't make this choice. You ain't go fight these niggas. You ain't start this. You ain't got nothing to do with nothing. It's just the whole fact of a riot being a riot going on. So that way you got them and get stuck into that shit. So now you got them. That's like being on the streets and going to jail. Like you get, you, you stuck in that shit. Like one thing coming up in that, the neighborhoods that we came up in, it's like, you got this, it's like this imaginary, but I want to say imaginary, but it's like, we, we almost inherit the beef, right? Yeah, Talk yeah, to me about sure. that inherited beef where, like you said, like you could be young 
and you ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but just because you're associated with or because this is family, you automatically put on the side. That's where you live. That's like that period. That's how everything goes. That's the whole thing to all this shit. Like inherited, inheriting the beef. Mm. Cause a lot of niggas don't even know who they're in tour with. They never seen them before. They never talk shit to them. They never, they don't even know if this a good nigga for real. Like, it's probably your best friend for real, but goddamn it, y'all done inherit this shit because his homie in tour with his homie from 15 years ago. They got five homies that's gone. Goddamn it, one of your homies wind up getting killed. Goddamn it, by one of they homies and shit, but niggas don't even be knowing each other for real. But how does that, like, just being honest, right? I always ask this shit, like, how does that, knowing better now, I'm assuming, I'm because you look like a good dude, got your head mm-hmm. on straight. Yeah. Knowing better now, how fucked up is that, though? I be fucked up about it every day. Just knowing I want better and knowing that I want the, the little guys in the hood to do better and want better. Because I see life, like, I'm on jets, I'm on goddamn it, yachts, I'm on goddamn it, going here, going there, big shows, 30,000 football stadiums, like, I'm experiencing all this shit. Mm. So I'm just, I be thinking in my head, like when I wake up and shit, it always hit me. Like, it's crazy because it hit me when I take a nap and I wake up in the middle of the day. Like, it always hit me like, damn, little bro, them could really be doing something different instead of looking like for this shit and this shit that's not even like, they gonna praise you for two seconds, bro. Cause next thing you know, it's gonna be somebody doing this shit better than you do it. Facts. And then even that, bro, when you gone, shit, your name live for, yeah, we got we hear niggas' names in the songs and shit, but niggas forget about you the next week. You want a shirt for literally a, a day or two down the collar, fucking stressed out. I don't even want to wear a shirt no more. Nope. I mean, being real. Nobody understand that. You can be, I don't care who you is, bro. Once you gone, you gone. Mm. Like, that's the way God designed, designed this world. Like, once you gone, you gone. I don't care how good you rap, how good you dress, how good you make shoes, all that shit, because it's out of sight, out of mind. Once you got them and get to stop seeing the motherfucker, they're going to be off your mind for real. Like, mm-hmm. you're going to have your times where you go back and be like, damn, I miss my bro. Mm-hmm. But it's so hard to, like, it get hard to remember shit, like, after a while, if you Not get what much. I'm saying. Like, it get hard to remember the good times y'all had, the bad times. Like, So let me ask you this, then. This might fuck you up, though. We say that, right? Yeah. And that's the truth. But let's be real, though. The music that bang and that hit is the music that's glorifying the bullshit. Yeah. Being somebody that that's in it and that been that life, right? How do you separate or how you dif- differentiate the art of the music and the art of explaining what I've been through and not promoting it at the same time, though? Like, how do you differentiate if you even can? See, I, I be stuck on that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's my biggest thing with my music is not to... I can tell y'all what I've been through, what I had, what I had going on back then, what I, you know, but like, I try not to glorify this shit, like, mm. cause it's, it's a way bigger life outside of that shit, like. It's pain music. Yeah. It's, it's for sure it's pain music, but it's, it's crazy because as much as it being pain music, I don't know if you can relate to this, but it'd be like, and I think Dirk does a great job at not getting away from this, but I feel like what happens is once niggas start talking about different shit other than the pain, mm-hmm. then the hood kind of like not accept him as much, right? It's like, man, oh man, what happened to, or he, he used to be, the, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, I'm just, I see shit differently now. Like you said, I see fucking private jets, nigga. Yeah. I'm talking about jets now. Yeah. It ain't about the trenches, I ain't in yeah. there. It's just, it, um, as far as that go, I just think that shit a gift and a curse, Yeah. right? Cause if it's not, it's not um like, I'm gonna use Dirk for example, right? It's not glorifying it in a way. Like if you really listen to him, he might tell you like his perspective of what he'll be doing if he was still in that situation. Mm. So at the same time, you would think uh, he glorifying it when it's not. He's really telling the kids, the the shorties that's out there, sometimes how to protect yourself mm. when you're in that environment. Like you can't say he can't save everybody. I can't save everybody. You can't save everybody. So in some way, them kids still gonna be there. So most of them kids learn from. Him. Mm is it's like it's where he come from it's what we come from so i might tell you in my music how to keep keep your like no keep your shit together like don't be going out you know starring shit don't be going out like they say lacking and shit like because y'all still there y'all have to be there it's fucked up but y'all have to be there 
until you make a way for yourself like that's crazy but also an interesting perspective because it can go we can go into like just it's <laughs> we talk about an epidemic and a pandemic of living bro let's talk about the epidemic on music to be honest because it's like yeah. like you said you telling them for the people that is there right i'm just painting a picture yeah. but we really got people who make the rules or, or make the laws create the laws who is using incriminating our artists for the music that they make and it's kind of like robbing them of their creativity almost yeah do you think like are do you ever be nervous or scared to, about the music you make because niggas is really incriminating niggas for lyrics at this point yeah so so you just got to be smart on how you see it mm. it's how you worry shit. so it's always a catch to what if they make this shit, you got to beat that shit. Mm. They make you this way, you got to beat that shit. Mm. They always want us to lose mm. in so many words. You feel me? Like, no, they want a motherfucker to lose, so you got to beat them at their own game. Mm. Yeah, nah, it was a song coming out the DMV. Uh, <laughs> niggas was talking about, uh, yeah, you know that song too? He's like, he's like, I'm not a trap or some shit like that. He's like, uh, I don't do none of that shit I be saying in my songs. That shit is funny as shit, but it's it's actually hard though. Yeah. So like, I feel like, I don't know. It's it's, it's it's, it's, it's weird. But what about this, though? Because I'm going to have a real conversation with you. Yeah. Let's be real, though. There's a lot of niggas that's... There's a lot of people who really be rapping about the shit they done done or is doing. I feel like that's the stupidest shit ever, but you're an artist. Yeah. Talk to me, because I don't understand. Like, what you think about that? Like, I mean, what you going to rap about? Like, what you going to put on the facade that you going to have to keep on forever? But like, if you... Plan, not even plan, though. This is how I really feel. Yeah. If you really doing this shit and you see niggas is getting locked up for this yeah. shit, why you make it? I don't make sense to me. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I don't understand it, bro. Like, maybe you can help me understand. Um, Like, what I could think about that, like, some, some, like, it's crazy, but some niggas don't know no better. Like, not, not that they don't know no better. Yeah, some fact, niggas bro. don't know otherwise yeah. if i'm gonna use that word like that's some right. niggas don't know other shit like yeah they right. can't say shit but the shit that they got on their head like You're right nah that's a fact damn that's fucked up that's crazy Yo, how yeah. is music going for you like how how, how is how long have you been in in the spot that you're in right now um i've been in this spot for like um I'm gonna say about three years. Three years? So like so you've been years, lit, yeah. like where you at now for like three years? Yeah, I'm like like super good. So I make good decisions. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like I don't just jump into shit. I don't just jump into deals and all this shit. So I just try to keep my shit smart because I always preach to my guys and shit and tell my guys like um, I look at shit for the long run. Mm. I don't look at it for right now. I ain't going to get a million dollars. Um, right now, when I can splurge that million dollars, when I can make forty, thirty thousand dollars a month, like for the next three, four, five, ten years, like mm. I'm not gonna go do that. I'm not gonna go get that million dollars. I'm gonna take this thirty. Sometime it might drop to twenty, ten if I ain't dropping no music. But I'm not like so that I'm not just gonna go get like no, it's a marathon. Go get sure. the quick shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that shit a real marathon. So I want to be in it for the longevity, so I can always be able to do what I want to do. Like I ain't I I'm I'm at a position right now I can drop whenever I want to drop any song any day and that's, that's what awesome. I'm gonna do that's what I've been doing like I want to drop a song every week I want to become one of them artists to where man this dude drop every time like I can count on him to get me through shit like I know he coming this week I know he coming in two weeks instead of being like signed and shit to where I can't drop for nine months mm. eight months and shit so I just want to start being consistent too but. No, I think um, that's definitely amazing that you can even recognize that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of niggas, a lot of people are like, they stay in the industry, but they yeah. still got one foot in the game and one foot out the game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of, it's unfortunate and it's sad to say, but a lot of niggas be in the game and, you know, consumers like myself mm -hmm. or people that, that listen to the music mm -hmm. and watch the videos and shit, they see them as one way. So something happened to them and then we like, our heartbroken one whole time. We don't know what the fuck was going on in their life. They really still in a game, kind of, if that makes yeah. sense. See, that's what you say. Like, you're right, because the game never stopped. Mm. So you can be in it last year. This might be a rough year. Next year might be a rough year. You might catch your wave the fourth year. Mm. You might be down fifth year, catch a wave 10 years from now. Like, the game never stopped. As long as you're working, you keep working on getting better. Like, you just got to come different. Oh, they ain't fucking with this you. I right, come different. Give them a better you. Mm. Give them this you. Give them that you. Like, talk about the girls. You might be stuck on the girls for two years. Mm. 
or I might be stuck on my pain for two years. Like that's how you that's how you keep it going. Like just keep switching it up. Yo, you know, um, tell me some misconceptions of the hood. Some things you learned from the hood and you thought was that made you thought made a hundred percent sense until you became more knowledgeable until you started to know better. What's some misconceptions that the hood taught you that you thought was right, but that's really wrong? Mm-hmm. Shit. Uh, that that um, basically being out there, just getting drunk, high, that's the life. Because mm. <laughs> that's what a lot of, like, that's what fuck a lot of us up. We get high off of the $1,500 car. Mm. Little bankroll, seven eight hundred dollars, fresh shoes, clothes like that shit, not nothing. You ain't even the the way that you even said that gave me chills because the fact that like you said drunk high, first thing I'm thinking about is weed, alcohol, right? Yeah. Nah, it's about these these little come up that you come up on. Yeah. You get high off of that, right? Yeah. And like you lose yourself. That's yeah. crazy. Feeling like you the man because you hit her, her, and her. God damn it. They gonna be there, bro. Like the girl, not saying like, you know, on a disrespectful note, but like, they gonna be there. Nah, can we talk? Like, yeah, for sure. That's like, yeah. Nah, like, what happened? <laughs> they gonna be there, bro. Not even like, that, right? Yeah. If you can fuck these, all due respect, if you can fuck these hoes, then a lot of niggas can fuck these hoes too. For sure. So let's be real. Let's keep it all the way 100, right? I, I tell my little brothers them that all the time. You're not the toughest nigga in the world. You're not the only one can fuck her. You're not the only nigga going to see $1,000. You're not the only nigga going to wear these nice shoes, these clothes the way you like, like. And niggas get themselves into some shit from the hood because we think, oh, I got to fuck all these bitches, right? Yeah. Let me talk to these young niggas. What happened is niggas get themselves into some shit and then they get themselves into some shit that they can't get themselves out of. For example, right? Nigga want to run around fucking all these hoes. Now nigga ain't strapping up. Now nigga got a baby. Now you got baby child support. Niggas garnishing your checks. You can't do nothing about that. Okay. That's not even the worst. Now you can run around with a fucking disease. Because yeah. you're fucking the wrong hoes. Yeah. Or the same bitch that look good is yeah. fucking a, a, a hundred other lit niggas that's going to give a son that gave it to gave it to you. You can't even get yourself out of the situation. For sure. Or you fucking with a hoe who fuck with somebody for real. Mm-hmm. And now you... In, and now you you did, or you in prison because you protecting yourself. You feel yeah. me, like, yeah. bro? I just feel like, man, niggas be chasing the wrong shit. For and sure. like you said, like the hood, definitely, like they gave us these false ideologies of of life. Like, fuck with these chicks, man. Honestly, bro, if you're a nigga, I ain't trying to be judgy, but if you're a nigga and you got a bitch and you ain't faithful to your bitch and you ain't loyal to your girl, I can't even trust you because if you ain't loyal to the bitch you you lay the chick you lay next to every day, you yeah. damn sure ain't gonna be loyal to me yeah. for real. So like, nah, the hood definitely, they gave us some false, some, some, some false ideologies of, of real life that just ain't real. Like it ain't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's some crazy, like I ain't gonna lie, one of the things for me was, I said this many, many times on my podcast, not being a bitch, right? Like, what does a bitch look like? A nigga look at me wrong, a nigga say some shit to me wrong, I gotta, oh nigga, I ain't no bitch. You ain't about to just, man, your life is more important than any, anything a nigga can say to you. You feel me? So nah. like, I ain't trying to preach, but like, ah, oh, that's not, you, you nah. struck a nerve. When you yeah, said that, that shit real though. That shit real. That bro. shit real. I can't remember what um, Meek said some shit about like, in the song he was saying something about like um, like he let he he got his kids to live for and shit. So he ain't, he ain't got no more pride. Like in so many words, like that's how I'm walking this mm-hmm. earth now. Like I don't learn so much. Like I ain't walking with pride, bro. I lost a lot of my homies because they was like tough bro like mm. but they was tough though like yeah. that was them that's the no, way they live they soul, really boy. tough they really like that but at the same time i always think like damn i lost bro because bro was like too much like you got pride like Talks. we got we got too much pride come on man like i don't move off that shit no more the little niggas at the shows fuck y'all ooh, i don't move off that now if you come play and you got them in even come to me like me the wrong way then that's when i'm gonna handle what i gotta handle but as far as all that shit i couldn't avoid like all that looking and mugging man you was a goofy mm. i know you're a goofy because you mugging right now and you don't even know me you was a goofy i'm gonna treat you like a goofy if you come play but i know you're a goofy because you looking crazy you want some attention like a female like Bro. that's a lot of niggas though you talk some gospel some real nigga gospel <laughs> right now I that's feel like, real like no nah, for real tell me about bro 
Talk to me about having somebody like King Von, right? Yeah. And I and again, uh prayers to all the fallen soldiers families and things like that but like because what i'm about to say is it's crazy because like from the outside looking in it seems like it's a normal now for chicago right like mm-hmm. we y'all, that's like y'all lose so many prominent niggas you feel me and i know that hurt to see see like with vaughn vaughn was like so so we come from like the same places my block three blocks down from his block but we grew up like this we slept in the same bed you and vaughn yeah, like we grew up, all of us grew up together. Damn. So, so it's like um, we done lost guys before fun, like a lot of guys. I done lost my closest homie, my best friends, the little boos, the LAs, the Lusties, little bros and shit. Vaughn done lost the Troys, the big A's, the, you know, the people, whiteys from his block. So we always went through this. So it's at a point where we, we stopped crying. Mm. Like it wasn't even no more like, like back then it was like, oh, I'm hurt for weeks. I can't even talk for real. Like, but then it became like, damn, that shit crazy. You become desensitized in a, in a sense. Yeah, that's how you like. Not that you don't love your brother or like, you just think like, damn, that shit crazy as hell. Like, it ain't no, it it ain't no more like super, like emotional. It's like it hurt deeper in the mind. Cause it, I I just feel like I, I be wondering like is this shit like this cause we grown mm. like cause we getting older is that the reason but whole time it's not cause it's people living regular lives that don't go through none of that like mm. they haven't even had nobody pass from gunshots they probably never even heard a gunshot like life is so much bigger than our two eyes yeah coming up in those places though we don't really know nothing else but these places all I know is to if a nigga call me this, like you said before, niggas don't know mm-hmm. no better. That's all they know. And my question really was for you coming mm-hmm. up making music and shit, seeing a nigga like Vaughn, I feel like Dirk been there in this space for a long time now. Mm-hmm. And again, this is my outside opinion. I feel like Vaughn was like the next big thing far as he was close to the streets, but he still was like going like, Going to superstardom, if that makes sense. See, 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 see with Vaughn, it was way different because mm. Vaughn was the inspiration after the winning. We seen the winning. So once you see the winning and you go back down, like you, you, That's you're not around the winners yeah. no more. The Chief Keith's them gone. Dirk grinding so hard. He not where he at right now. Exactly He's grinding so saying. hard. So it's like we really ain't got no hope because we we seen this shit happen once. This shit can never happen again for Exa- real. That's exactly then what broke I'm come and he changed the whole like man this shit can happen again and again and again and again. He just give us hope that we got them and we gonna do it again. If we fall down like we did when he passed we gonna get up there again. So my question right him being that next hope right mm-hmm. you rising yourself making music you lose like almost the only hope that y'all had how does that make you feel as an artist as a friend i know you desensitizing it you're used to it at a, at, a, at a sense but how does that do anything to, to your pride does that like not your pride i'm sorry like that was bad words but does it make you um is it discouraging to you see when you first hear that? see see what's crazy is i, I was like close to vaughn for real I was like a every day for Vaughn. At some point, I'm not saying like, bro had his best friends. I had my best friend. We weren't always, but we became close, so close to where we together every day for four, five years straight, mm. every day. So we built the relationship. So I know how he was. Mm. He was a man, suck this shit up. Let's go. Like, so he left that with me. Like he left that, man, you got to do it. He always told me, Ooh, man, you go do it. Like, you know, and we can't, ain't, ain't nothing to cry about. Like, mm. go do it. So I ain't even got that in me no more to where it's like, I can't do it. I ain't going to do it. Hell no, nah, I wake up every day. Just off him. Like, because he the one that that left that like that. You going to do that shit. Man. Ain't nothing bigger than you. But man like, to man though, right? Yeah. That's, sometimes shit hit, hit different though, yeah. right? And I feel like, you know, sometimes you can see somebody that's so talented and they pass and it's like you almost lose a piece of you. It's like, yeah. damn, bro, like, this nigga, this shit happened to him? For sure. What the fuck? Like, 
You did you ever you ain't feel nothing like that? Yeah, hell yeah. He took gangsta like like when I say gangster, I ain't talking about like on a game banging level. I'm talking about like on a super cocky level, like a like I know if it can happen to bro, it can happen to anybody because Vaughn Vaughn was different. Mm. Like when shit happened to Vaughn. Ain't nothing happening to Vaughn. I done been shot twice. A lot of our guys done been shot. Everybody ain't shit happening to Vaughn. Better know it. Cause he different. Like he was different from like he was always on a different type of timing for real. Like real soldier. Like every day was a battlefield day. I might slip up to mine be on some super goddamn it. I want to look nice. I want to goddamn it fuck with these girls and all that. Like bro was on a different type of level. He was always mentality. It's busting. Mm. Like we see in Chicago. Like that mean it's turned up. You better keep your eyes open. Like bro was one of them. Like it's busting. You playing? You think you fresh? Your ass better wake up. <laughs> like he was one of them type. Like you better stop playing. Think you want to be fresh? Like that shit ain't nothing. It's it's busting out here. Like it's real. So what do you? How did you move forward from when you see like you saying nothing happened to Vaughn, right? Yeah, something happened. Yeah, it's like a reality check. Yeah, do you move differently going forward from that? Or? For sure. Now when I get fresh, I'm on that. Mm. Like not looking for trouble, but I'm on that. Like I'm not playing. I'm not letting nothing happen to me. I got kids. I got a mama. She lost when I lost Vaughn, and I lost my friends. She lost them too. She always asks how they mamas do, how you how, how they mamas doing, or like we talk about how you feel about this and that, you know, like so I wake up on that, like I ain't playing with nobody. I'm not out to get nobody. I'm not out to hurt nobody, but I ain't playing with nobody. Cameras. It make me wake up like it can happen to me. I always think that all day long. It can happen to bro. It happened to bro, bro, and bro. Like it can happen to me. Cameras aside, though, right? And I ask this question a lot too. I ask a lot of questions, <laughs> but cameras aside, when you in a house by yourself, and I know you said like, Bron, um, Vaughn kind of left that into you, like you got to keep going. And I know we desensitize and things like that, but when everybody's away from you, and you have time to yourself in those rooms, in those dark rooms, when when you're laying down at night, how did the 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 passing of Vaughn really make you feel on the inside? Not what you had to show to everybody else, but for you personally. Fucked up. Mm. Like talking about like that shit different from talking about it like a, a fucked up like like damn like I be stuck in the, the different state of mind because I lost like I told you I lost a lot of homies and a lot of them hit me different so Vaughn was one of them that hit me different like because this is my everyday it's my broski he's not from my block we're not from the same block but this is my broski we mm. matter of fact we is from the same block to tell you how close we is, like, we is from the same block. So that shit just get me. At night sometimes, like, it still hit me. Like, at night, I be fucked up. Yeah. 30, 30 minutes to an hour, I just be sitting there, like, I can cry sometimes, like, just sitting there. And I be like, damn, I'm sitting there crying for real. Damn, that's some but real just, shit. Yeah, it's just, that shit deep, and that shit real. That shit real life. Do, does it, do you ever think about the times where, like, you hurting and, and I think this might just be a man thing. Like, do you ever feel like we have this image to protect, not just as an artist, but as a man that like, I can't really share this to nobody because they're going to judge me a certain way. They're going to look at me a certain way. I mean, I don't know why, but I get emotional for real. Okay. So I ain't, That's good. I ain't the I mean, type shit. to be like scared to all these niggas looking at me. <laughs> Hell no. You got no niggas looking at me. Mm. Cause I know who I am for real. Mm. I know I like ain't to be fucked with. I know this in that deep down in my heart. I know this like me being me. So I don't be like, no, nah, I ain't doing this shit. I'm letting that shit go. Like Man, you talking at some that real time. Shit. Yeah. I love this conversation because bro, you giving so many games and gems and people just gotta just dig deeper to see because all you saying is you confident. Yeah. For like a lot of weirdos and a lot of niggas be pussy. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie. Like niggas just be bitches. Like a nigga, nobody can say something For to a nigga because sure. a nigga is so insecure within himself yeah. that he got to prove to everybody else that he's somebody. But like you said, you grounded enough that like, bro, I can come to you and tell you exactly how I feel and yeah. I'm still the most solid nigga you want to know. Yeah. You can say what the fuck you want. Yeah. That, that that goes back to the hood too. When you say niggas is bitches, you be having niggas who not even like that. 
try to act like they like that. Like I know you. I knew you when you was eight, ten, and twelve. I used to make you cry. Like I know little shorties Bro. that I couldn't make cry. Like I know little shorties who was stood tall. Like you not him, bro. And, like, but that's crazy because the way the world is now, right? It's like smoke and mirrors. I don't want to disrespect nobody with business or whatever. A lot of niggas that's catching these unnecessary bodies be them softies, though. For sure. But what happened is we looking at it and we're like, oh, that's a real, oh, that nigga lit. Like, don't fuck with him. He got all, like, and it's like, Honestly, bro, he got a lot of insecurities that he ain't tap in with. That's why he can't really, that's why he doing all this shit. Because a real mm. nigga don't need to prove to nobody that he real nigga. No. He ain't even going to tell you. Exactly. Whatever he going to do, he going to do that shit and that's going to be that. Like, ain't going to rock around here tell you. For sure. Nah, for real. I don't know. Criminal, like, it's it's a, it's so many niggas who walk around like that and just spill, just talk, talk, talk. Even if you did do it, I'm knowing you're not like that. Because your thing is... That everybody know you did it instead of you doing that shit for you. Mm, mm, mm. Like you want everybody to know you did this shit instead of you being that one that's like, I'm taking this one with me. Like this shit ain't this, this shit, shit ain't for everybody. <laughs> this shit ain't for the kids to praise. The kids don't even need to know. If you're a real one, you're not even gonna let no kids know because you don't even want them doing that shit. Like niggas ain't niggas ain't listening, man. But so talk to me about this. I talked to a lot of niggas or artists about um this aspect of getting out their hometown. Mm -hmm. A lot of niggas is like, man, look, man, if I ain't moving like that, I don't have nothing to worry about. But we we know that it just ain't true all the time. No, you, you got to know, like, every city got them, <laughs> them gorillas. I ain't going to lie. Like, I don't care where you at. Every city got them gorillas that's going to pull up and hit that caper. When I say hit that caper, that stain, whatever people say, that jug, whatever, like, it's them, them niggas is going to pull up because they ain't got shit to live for. Mm. They trying to feed their family. So for you to be out in your city thinking this, no, nah, they know that's whatever. In my city, whatever. They know that's downtown. They know that's Michigan Ave. They know that's whatever, like whatever you post. They know. They know that shit. Mm. So you have to, like, in a sense, if you from the hood and you make it out, you got to get on. You have to. I don't care who you is or who you think you is, bro. Like. It's only a matter of time. So you pro like moving away from your home city. Of course, giving back, but. For sure. Mm. See, my city different. Like, I don't want to sit here and act like, you know, where it is the city of the gangsters. Like, it's a different type of environment. It's a different type of culture. You're not making it. I don't care who you is. You're not making it out there. Mm. Especially with money. It ain't even the niggas who I say to jump out, whatever that's going to come get you. It be your own people. Because it be so much hate and like and steal that niggas is so much hurt that niggas switch up niggas start to hate niggas start to think shit that's not even like true oh my bro don't love me no more he ain't called me in two days mm. whole time he working you know he rap he you know he shit. or he going through something like now you thinking now these is these be killers thinking and shit so if you got a killer get to thinking wrong about you you got to be on point because he like that's he kill so you'll be a motherfucker, he kill. And the crazy thing about it is you won't even know when he feel like that. <laughs> At all. He ain't finna tell you, yeah, I'm gonna do something to you. He gonna wait. And this gonna be your nigga from 20 years. This be your cousin, your brother. Man. Like, it's just so much build up out there. Like, you know, not, not that I don't know who to trust. I just know that anybody is capable of doing anything, bro. Like. Once they get to their lowest point in life where they feel like they ain't got nobody, they turn on everybody. I seen it. Mm, that's crazy. Talk talk to me a little bit about like, cause you again, Chicago is famous for so many things. Of course, yeah. so many so, so much violence, right? When um a lot of people would say academics came up off of Chicago gang gang violence and shit like that. Yeah. Do you feel like have you ever gave that a thought? Did you ever look at academics as somebody who like was promoting negativity or he was just bringing light to the city? Well, how did you look at it? Is that something you've been paid attention to? I do. Mm. And I got my own perspective on that shit. Like, an uh, instigator is one thing, right? But to give a motherfucker something to instigate is a whole nother thing. I fuck with you, bro. So if, he, <laughs> if, if he's speaking on some shit that's going on that he see on the internet... 
Why is it his fault? Hey, I fuck with you, bro. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I, I like real, bro. Dog. Like, I mean, it don't get no more self aware. I, I be thinking about this shit already. Like, why is everybody blaming this or the shade room or the this blog or that blog? Like, why y'all blaming them when these goofy ass niggas the one putting the shit all on the internet? Doing the videos for him to post all him versus him. Of course he gonna post it. You just post this shit and your 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 whatever your op just post this shit. Why he can't post it? I fuck with if y'all post it, like I fuck with this young man, man. He seems like he's a very intelligent <laughs> man. That's that shit real, bro. Like I say people no don't pay attention, bro. LA people people just don't pay attention to, to anything out this motherfucker. But playing devil's advocate, though, right? Yeah. We can't. I feel like a part of that did help the culture or the music culture rise. It's mm. sad. It's sad, but I feel like a lot of that negativity and that violence helped Chicago get on to a sense where it's like, we know Chicago was somewhere not to fuck with, so when somebody making music, it's like, oh, I believe that nigga. Kind of. And it's Z, be the motherfucker you don't need to believe. <laughs> Just because this place like that, that don't mean he like that, bro. Right. Like, so a lot of niggas be trying to come up off the uh, the image. Yeah, Chicago. Oh, everybody going to think I'm gang. Okay, so I ain't even going to say that. Niggas do be gangster. Going other places. So this would be a goofy. In a, why you think rappers always getting win on and shit? Like getting jewelry took. Because they be goofies in their own hood. But they'll go out here and make shit seem like to the world that they this big savage. But whole time they got this nigga to answer to. Mm. That real savage that's out there. Nigga, where them pipe? Where, them, where, them, where that shit at? Every time you step up, every time you come around. Nigga, where that shit at? Mm. We ain't playing with you. Come with that shit. Like, damn. That's crazy. Nah, that's some real shit. Damn. Yo, how was the, uh, we hear about the streets and shit, right? Like the 63rd, yeah. uh, 64th, like, is it, cause you were saying like you and Vaughn, like with three blocks. Yeah, I grew, so, up, I grew up on 60th and King Drive. Vaughn grew up on 64th and King Drive, 65th. How the fuck do niggas live in Chicago? Like, so how do I, do I just can't walk on that block? Like, how does that work? Cause the blocks be like right here and right here. You can't walk on that block. What you the? don't leave off of your block. So so if so if this a block, right, and this another block, you stay on that side of the street and they gonna stay on that side of the street. Because once they come on this side of the street, it might be a motherfucker from over here that just wandered off and came on this side of the street. So that's how shit happened though. That's insane, bro. That's crazy. So how how do niggas get to work? Niggas don't go to work. <laughs> 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 niggas don't go to work, man. Niggas just gotta stay where the fuck they. If at. a nigga go to work, that nigga probably on the block, and that's one of them guys that's like, bro, don't put me in that picture. I gotta go to work. Okay. Yo, that's. Crazy. But nine out of ten niggas don't go to work. Niggas don't go. Goddamn it! If you're going shopping, you probably take the whole hood shopping, or you're gonna tie your your crew to where y'all go out and go shopping, and make it quick, like. Just off the fact y'all don't y'all ain't ducking shit, but y'all don't want to get into shit. Cause if shit get ugly, everybody going down. Yeah, that's crazy, like, bro. That's a crazy ass way. Like Baltimore is crazy, but it ain't like that. Like niggas it crazy, but it ain't like that though. Oh, that's insane. See, in my hood, I don't want to. I like I don't want to like super speak on too much, cause I ain't one of them niggas that just want to broadcast. Cause there's people still living there. They still gotta survive, and they still gotta. Beat the odds, and when I say beat the odds, they still gotta beat police and opposition, and they gotta do all this. But in some sorts, like you'll be living on this block, and you'll be in tour with every block on the four corner. Like when you look this way, you're in tour with them. You go that way, you go this way, and you go that way. Everybody in tour. Yeah, that's a that's a hell of a way to live. I ain't trying to live mm -hmm. like that. That's crazy. Yo, question. Talk OTF. Let's let's get back to. OTF and, and, and the music and shit. Yeah. Yo, am I tripping or ever since that uh, Dirk was lit? He was always lit. If you was a hood nigga, he was lit for sure. For sure. But yeah. am I tripping? Did he go to a, like a different level of stardom ever since that uh, that Drake feature? What was it? The uh, what, what what feature was that? What song was it? Nah, I feel like since that I, feature, bro, the shit got crazy. Nah, it's 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 crazy because it's like, um, I feel like, bro, bro, a different type of smart and a genius, like music, musically. Mm -hmm. It's just period as a person too, but 
Like, he was going to do it. I'm as, I, I, I feel he was going to do it. But, like, Drake, you know, Drake a phenomenon. Like, yeah. he's a real legend. Like, so, of course, getting a song with Drake is going to take you to the next level. I don't care who you is. Like, not to the next level, but going to give you some type of that momentum. extra push. Yeah. Like, And yeah. he, he was already hot, so that just for sure put him on steroids. That shit went yeah. crazy. Like, that shit is crazy. But if you listen to him, though, he was already on steroids. <laughs> Like, with that or without that dude on steroids, like. Yeah, I, don't know. I just feel like he just, like, it's just, I don't know. I just feel like he became a bigger star. Like, yeah. Super Saiyan type vibe. For like, sure. Like, crazy. Yeah, because it's a catch. It's a catch, like, how the industry go. Like, it's a catch to where you got to gain fans. And only how these fans is going to fuck with you is if you fuck with who they're a fan of. I get what you're saying. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing you can do. Is have a girlfriend. Have a woman. What? And be real to your woman and take care of your woman and your family. That's like that's the biggest. That's gonna beat out any feature. That's gonna beat out any promotion you doing. Like you gotta know it. No, Jay Z, no. Beyonce, huge. Offset Cardi. Offset Cardi. Huge. Yeah. And I was like. With Dirk, like, India, sis, like, that's was the best thing he could have ever did in life. No, nah, like, that shit do shit. Get his woman, like. Let me ask you this then. Being a superstar like that, trying to get away from the, the troubles, and then losing King Von. How hard is that being a superstar and having so, or, because I'm pretty sure you next to him, like, just being a superstar and niggas is saying, like, you gotta, you gotta get your man's back. You feel me? Like you gotta give revenge and shit like that. But like, it's like, bro, how do you even deal with that? You don't deal with it. But like, these is not- these is people. Nah, if you if you lend some fuck some, probably some little snotty nose motherfucker <laughs> at home <laughs> using a mama phone tell you to do some <laughs> shit and that shit getting to you, you crazy. That's true. I mean, that's Nobody true. don't dictate no paces. Like, this for all the fans. If you watch, you, you don't dictate no paces. Nobody ain't listening to you. Talking about go do some shit that's going to get them 500 years. Like, and then niggas going to know. <laughs> they often come tell you, yeah, I slid. You you ain't got fucking $2 in your pocket. You can't send me shit if I tell you I did. Like, <laughs> Yo, do you, are you making music with uh, a lot of the OTFN? Like, how is that? Like, you got something with Dirk or? Yeah, hell yeah, I got that. Like, little like, I really be on like, um, everybody. We all work together, right? But like, I got I got shit with everybody. Probably yeah. two, three songs. You 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 on tour and shit with them, right? Yeah, okay. hell how, yeah. How was that? Crazy. Damn, I can imagine. See, I was going on right before Dirk, so it was like crazy for me. Like, I ain't gonna say like I, I got a lot of work to do. What you mean, so like what? some 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 shows was like, okay, we see you. Some shows like, damn, it's him. Some shows, was, you know, like some shows bittersweet. Some shows like it's it's all right. It just lets you know that you got a lot of work to do compared to when you watching Bro come out mm. after you and they like ah the whole time. They might go crazy when you come out, have the lights up, but like when he come out, it's like way like ah crazy like yeah. you like damn i can't wait to that day where i got them like that like nah, facts. but it's levels though because even when we was like rolling loud like like i feel like my brother the biggest in the game but even like rolling loud like when when kanye west come out like on the left because kanye west do more than music so he got fans that's just gonna love him regardless of being a creator they was like, ah, they was crazy. It was just like a whole different atmosphere. So, you know, like, we all got work to do. Everybody got work to do. Even Kaye got work to do. Nah, facts. Like, even with his design and, like, he got people who's like Balenciaga who's, like, probably up here and Kanye probably just, like, on his way. Like, nah, facts. It's everybody always, always got work to do. Like you said, it's a, it's a marathon for real. Like, yeah. back to that. Yo, what was the hardest city for you? To, to to perform it, but I ain't give you no motion. Where I was at? Damn, I can think of it. Give me two seconds. That was uh. Take your time. 
damn where I was at, man. I can't even remember, but like we went to like 17 dates. I had about about three. Three? Well, they was like iffy. They was fucking with me, but they weren't like. But I had like 10 that was like crazy. Like, damn, I can't believe they just went that crazy for me out there. Damn. Like, yeah. All right, so coming from Chicago, right? There's a lot of niggas that came out of Chicago making music. If you had to give me your top five Chicago artists, who would it be? Of all time? All time. All time. I'm going to say, uh, so I give you three because you got Dirt, mm -hmm. King Von, Chief Keith, Kanye West, and uh, damn, who I want to say for that five? Uh, I said Dirt, Von, Kanye, Chief Keith. That air long as shit. And uh, what the I'm I'm gonna say, cause we can't leave women out. Like I'm gonna say Tink. Tink. Yeah. So top five artists we got to start over. Top five artists of all time coming out of Chicago is who? Dirt. Uh huh. Vaughn. Uh huh. Chief Keef, Kanye, and Tink. I'm I'm being there in a okay. minute. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at For that. For sure. I ain't mad at that. Yeah. Who you think had, except for uh, Kanye West, who had the biggest influence coming out of Chicago? The biggest influence. Can I give you an example, right? Yeah. See. I'm going to just use my hood for example, right? So it, when we was growing up, either you listen to Chief Keef or you listen to Dirt. So a lot of people going to say Chief Keef, but I'm a, like, I'm a Dirt baby. Like, I grew up off bro. Like, okay. I, I listened to bro first. So I say, like, Dirt for sure. I was going to ask you out of those. It's crazy because yeah. I was going to ask you out of those two. I yeah. was going to say who had the most influence out of, like, Lord Dirt or Chief Keef. Because yeah. influence, you're talking about, like, um, Influence on the culture, influence on a rap game, influence on everything. Dirk, Dirk, influence stars, bro. He gave, Dirk he gave us King Von. Chief Keef? Like, he gave you Von. I feel like Chief Keef gave us drill music, though. He did, but people was doing drill music. He was just the best at it. Okay. okay. And this my, I love him to death. I love bro to death. Like, hell yeah, he, he a goat. He in that top two, for sure. But like, it's, it's people who was doing drill music. So you'll have to ask somebody who's not from that era. I'm really from that era, like inside that era. So like I heard drill music before bro was doing drill music. Okay. Yeah. Damn. So what's up with the music? What's up with you right now? Like what's going on? What you got going on? Shit, I'm um, I'm getting ready to drop like a... Uh, yeah, speak a little louder because I don't know what the fuck. I'm getting ready to drop uh, like a 10 song, a 10 song album. So I'm just was rebuilding because I was in a... Um, I was in a partnership with Empire and shit, and I had just dropped Loyal. Loyal got a uh, Dirk, Lil TJ, uh, Lil Baby, and Gunna Sheesh. on it. This is a slap on album, cause you know how shit be. I ain't gonna talk down on labels or nothing like that, but it just fuck wasn't. Them talk down. What the fuck? They it, <laughs> it, 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 it wasn't put in that light. Like if okay. you go listen to it, you would tell like, oh damn, this was a sleeper, and we really slept on this. Not just cause it's me. This is what people tell me all the time. And like, Empire. damn, why the fuck you ain't? Yeah. But at the same time, we only got a partnership. So, okay. you know, more, let's come with a partnership. Okay. So, I'm going to say that. So, not even talking down them. Let's come with a partnership. So, it's just the basis of, like, real life sticking to the budget. Okay, if we give you this amount, you got production, and then you got marketing. We're going to just give you that flat out. As far as a label, they own, goddamn it, whatever, what the shit is, like, 87% or 60%, they own more of the percentage, so they going to push for yeah. their money to go up. So it just was a still, not like, basically like a still moment for me, but right now I'm just grinding and shit. I just restarted. So now I'm just um putting my music out by myself. Damn. 
How was that yeah. going for you though? It's going good. I just had the song do a, a, a million in two weeks. Damn. So that's like that was crazy for that me because I'm like, crazy. it's it's me. It's really me by myself. I didn't go out and playlist. I didn't go out and super like my people didn't even post it for real. But this just I know my sound like I'm coming for sure. Now you got like, real emotion. Some niggas yeah. should be on Instagram, but shit. Yeah, it don't make it past. Yeah, yeah that's why cool. that's that's I told cool. myself like a million in two weeks, and you ain't got no label. You ain't doing all that shit. It's just me and my bros. Uh, shout out DJ Banger and Rob, Rob producer. You know we we sit down and we um we pick shit out. Rob Young, like t- bro, twenty two. So I listen to him because he the youth. He I he, see that he all like <laughs> he know like even Banger know Banger know he he a little older. So he he like he gonna give me a perspective for the oldest because I gotta touch them too. I ain't trying to make like I tell them I'm trying to make cuts. Mm. For real, like back in the day when they used to make cuts, like shit that's never end and never stop. You gotta listen to like I'm trying to make music like that. So yeah, that's a fact. Now, I, bro, I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Um, yeah, I mean, shit, whatever I can do to help support the movement, my nigga, because like even just having this was a great conversation. A lot of niggas for can't sure. even speak. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like a lot of niggas can't really articulate their words to form an opinion that makes sense. Yeah, you feel me? And I definitely fuck with that about you, dog. Yeah. Um, I guess for the niggas that don't know shit, most of these gonna be your fan anyway. But for the niggas that don't know, uh, let them know how to follow you and all the other shit. Hey, this book of six hundred. You can follow me at O Six O Loyal on Twitter, um, Big Six Hundred Booker on Instagram. Um, fuck with my YouTube. I got a lot of shit coming. I'm just want to on on some consistent shit to where I'm giving y'all shit every two weeks, three weeks at the most. Mm. Just you know, just grinding. I'm back on my two, goddamn it! I'm I'm doing this shit, you know, not alone, but you know, I'm standing on my shit. So, go fuck with me. All my old music, my album, loyal, word to LA. Go fuck with all that shit. I got catch me if you care coming in uh, late September, early October. Ten songs, just me, just vibing, just just real cuts, real real music for real. Fuck with the real niggas, cause the real niggas matter, man. Hookah six hundred. Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. It's a wrap. Squad. Pleasure. We out. Let's get it.